Well, I have several things that have been in my mind that I want to talk about, but I think I'll start with this one. Um, Did any of them change as a result of what we've said already? Uh-huh. They've kind of flipped. Whoops. <laughs> they kind of flipped well, around a little bit. That was a little demonstration there. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Might want to avoid that one. I will. <laughs> so, um, something that's really important in my life are are animals, and I've always been very close to like dogs growing up, and they were kind of like my extended family and kind of my little group. Now, before you go further, we want to insert something really fast, and that is, emotion is the first indicator of what you're doing vibrationally, the first demonstration. Second is thoughts coming now thoughts come before the emotion but we want the emotion to be the first manifestation then a steady stream of thoughts will be your second indicator and usually third on that list is nature will show up in your experience to accentuate the frequency of your being and then other humans okay. it's been very nice talking with you <laughs> I think I got the answer on that uh, so when my dad passed away, I helped take care of him the last nine months of his life. And I was in a, a cemetery just biking down and feeling really close to him. And a friend of mine walked away and I said, let me just have a moment. I want to kind of have a moment. So I was actually talking with him. And at that moment, there was something wet on my leg. I looked down and there's this little black poodle. And he's just sitting there licking my leg and looking up at me. And I'm petting him and say, hi, how are you? And, you know, it was a nice interaction. And then from across the graveyard, this woman says, Augie, come here, please. Come here, Augie, leave the man alone. And that was my father's name. It's not like Bozo or Bob or, and I'm like, oh, my God. And so we, I walked over. Our work here is done. <laughs> In other words, with what precision can the universe deliver to you demonstrations of, yeah. It gets better. So I walk over to this woman and she, we had this interaction. I found out that her son had died on the same day as my father. Uh, he had committed suicide and they got this dog for the young boys that were left behind and named him Augie after the month. So we have this moment and... Blah, blah, blah. Ten years later, which was last week, I'm in a, in a coffee stand sitting there and another little black poodle comes up and sits at my feet outside. And I'm like, oh my God, hello. And I'm petting him. I turned to my friend. I said, would this be weird if his name is Augie? <laughs> and I took his tag and looked at it. And it was my father's nickname he grew up with. They didn't even call him Augie. It was Junior. And this little dog, same little black kind of poodle, is looking at me. And I'm just having this incredible moment. And so I guess my question around this is, do you... Really? You have a question? <laughs> <laughs> so I guess I, the answer is they come through to let you know something. Yeah, and your dad would like you to know he doesn't really hang out at the graveyard. It's <laughs> <laughs> good. Well, it's, it, it, it's a wonderful thing when you have an experience. The, the only thing that's odd about it is that experiences like that surprise you. Like, oh, isn't this amazing? What's amazing to us is that you are not having more of those experiences all day, every day, where you are noting the correlation between something that you've done vibrationally and the universe's very deft, very deliberate hand at assisting you. And it is especially nice and usually let's begin again when someone that you care about has made their transition it is usually through that pathway that you allow yourself to then understand the interconnectedness the eternalness of that which we all are we want you to feel the deliciousness of that but we also would like to put it into the scanty perspective that it 
it, it, we, we just want to say, yeah, and, and, yeah, and. Because there are hundreds of those or maybe thousands of those sort of potential demonstrations for you all day, every day. When they come in that emphatic, emphatic way, it gets your attention. But watch for them all day long. Just, you know how you finish one another's sentences. Do you understand what the power of, the, of mastermind is? When, when you come together with someone and you focus in some way with the, with the purposeful intention of finding high-minded thoughts and high-flying vibrations, that when just the synergy of two of you accomplish that, and imagine what it is in a gathering like this, when just the synergy of two of you accomplish that, it's you open a passageway that allows infinite intelligence to flow to you and through you. We can't even find words to demonstrate. We just want to say that things like that are happening all day that you don't even know are happening. There are all kinds of rendezvous on your behalf, insightful things that are coming to you. Humans, we love you so much. You know what's coming next. <laughs> are so often determined to carve out your own worthiness through your own discovering of things on your own that you often close yourself off to the available assistance as if the assistance somehow would neutralize your worthiness because someone else helped you with the idea Ooh, that was good where what you're really wanting to do is to find ways to achieve vibrational alignment with a frequency that allows you to be open to that and oh there is not anything that your dearly not ever departed like more than your conscious awareness of something that they are playfully in on like that and we want to say to you if things like that that the crowd gasps oh that's just amazing you have no idea what's going on on your behalf get tuned into this and you know you won't really know until you have deliberately focused your thought and got enough momentum going deliberately that you now own the thought and what it means until you do that you won't recognize the intertwining of the non-physical energies that are assisting you in so many ways it's like until you ask a question you don't have any relationship with the answer but when you start deliberately flowing and deliberately thinking and deliberately conjuring and deliberately allowing and deliberately aligning deliberately thinking when you start scripting and writing and doing focus wheels about it when you begin to make these thoughts your own then when the rendezvous when the convergence when the convergence of other factors come into being and we're not just talking about the convergence of your other physical friends they're the hardest part it's easy to converge with the non-physical likes of Augie it's easy to converge with those pure positive energy beings when you're in a pure positive energy place so think about the components there you were lovingly it's been enough time that you weren't still suffering lovingly contemplating the beingness and feeling appreciation of someone but it's the setup that we love <laughs> in other words that woman with that dog didn't just beam in from some other planet <laughs> There was a vibrational setup. There was a vortexual. It was spinning in the vortex. The cooperative components had already been assembled. Your impulse of when to go there, that's what was inspired. In other words, the feeling that you had to be there. And that was inspired from that broader perspective. Sometimes you think that deliberate creation is, I'll just stand here and I'll look out there and I'll find something that I want and I'll get some sort of device to go out there and get it and drag it over to me. And we say, if you would, all you got to do is get into this place of, well, you've done step one already. That's, that's what you, you've already done that. And Source has already done step two. So your step three, this is your step three moments. These are the moments to do step three. These are the moments to get into that vibrational alignment, you see. Stay here for just a little bit because we want to add something and then we know that there's more that you want to talk about. So we've been talking to you about this vortex that contains the vibrational version of all of these things that you want. And now we are talking to you about your point of attraction. We call it the grid. It's a sort of 
framework that we'll flesh in with the manifestation haven't really found the perfect way to describe to you your point of attraction that will help you to get your thoughts around it but your point of attraction your beingness your grid that will fill in with all of the other things is happening right now right now right now right now right now so we've been describing this grid as a sort of spinning someone very close to Esther recently said why does it spin and we say because it's easier to demonstrate the gathering of the cooperative components in this spinning momentum so this disk is spinning and the question is what is the vibrational frequency of your point of attraction and you can tell by the way you feel what it is are you on the honorary disk are you on the grieving disk are you on the high flying disk the appreciation disk the love disk in other words there is this emotional scale and what your mood is you know what we mean by that you know where you hang out Esther has in the past described herself as and we've described her as being on the overwhelmment disk too much to do not enough time to do it in sort of like the seven dwarves you know there was grumpy <laughs> and happy there was despondent <laughs> guilty there was the guilty dwarf you remember him <laughs> blameful about a hundred dwarfs now <laughs> And you can tell by the way you feel where where you're hanging out not all the time but sort of commonly you you know where you usually end up and we just want to point out that where you usually hang around is what gathers around you if, if you look around you and there are honorary people around you you sort of have to acknowledge that you're on the honorary disc <laughs> you sort of showed up at the honorary rendezvous and if you're on the happy disc or on the appreciative disc or on the loving disc there was you can tell and this is what we want to call your attention to so we've been suggesting that you get on the high flying disc on that high flying good feeling disc and our physical friends say well how do we do it and we say you were born there you were born there but you don't usually maintain it because you're so practical in your sifting and sorting and in your trying to fix things from a physical standpoint rather than wanting to achieve a vibration that attracts things if you can make that distinction if instead of working things out through action you can instead work things out by choosing a vibrational frequency and letting the law of attraction work it out but before you can do that you've got to accept that you're worthy to begin with that you're not here proving worthiness through struggle and that's a hard thing for a lot of physical friends to give up because you want your effort to count for something and we want any effort that you're applying to be applied toward wanting to be on the high flying disc we want it to be a mental effort but we don't want it to be effort because in the moment that it turns to effort then then you're not on the high flying disc so that's a good understanding isn't it 